For years ago, Nick and Audrey went on a vacation that turned out to be a murder scene. They were on a vacation around Europe, but in the end, they had to solve a big murder mystery of a millionaire. The motive of the murder was millions of dollars worth of inheritance. Years passed and now, in 2023, Nick and Audrey seem to have resigned from their job and decided to build their own detective agency to help people in need. Unfortunately, since they were still new in their business, they had difficulties finding clients. One night, while arguing about their agency's future, they got a call from someone unknown. Turned out, it is Maharaja. On the call, Maharaja told them that he had planned his wedding and he invited them to come. He also told them that they don't have to worry about anything because he would provide anything they needed. Audrey initially refused to come to the wedding party after what they experienced four years ago, but Nick kept convincing her and eventually, Audrey agreed to come to the party since she hadn't been on vacation for a long time. When they arrived at Maharaja's private island, they were immediately welcomed by Maharaja and his beautiful lover named Claudette, a girl from Paris, France. They also met the colonel, who since the incident four years ago, decided to become Maharaja's bodyguard, along with another guard named Louis. After they got to know some of the guests, Maharaja escorted Nick and Audrey to their place, which once they thought was a room, turned out to be a villa, specially prepared for them. They were amazed to see how magnificent the villa was. Nick and Audrey were amazed by the villa's automatic roof, a closet full of expensive clothes, a spacious bed, delicious food, and gifts to welcome special guests like them. On the night of the wedding, Nick and Audrey were amazed to see the grandeur of the event. When Audrey was alone, a man named Francisco greeted her. He is a famous football player. Francisco was invited because apart from being famous, it turned out that he was also a shareholder in Maharaja's company. After getting to know him, Audrey and Nick get some food to fill their plate, but suddenly, two women addressed Audrey for taking too much food. They were Seko and Imani. After they both left, Audrey met Maharaja's younger sister named Syra who was painting henna on her hand. Syra confided that she sat alone because she didn't like crowded parties like this. Apart from that, she also felt that when her brother got married, she wouldn't get the same amount of attention as she had now from her brother. In the middle of the chat, Francisco, Seco, and Imani showed up. A debate between them ensued and it was discovered that all of them hadn't been in a good relationship. All of them, including Syra, never get along since the very first place. They satirized each other about their past stories. Shortly after, the host announced the next event namely to dance together to welcome the groom. Since Maharaja is an Indian, so they danced an Indian-style dance like in the Bollywood movies. In the middle of the dance, everyone split the formation to form a path in the middle, and from the curtain, Maharaja appeared while riding an elephant, but his behavior was a little strange, until in the middle of the crowd, suddenly, Maharaja fell to the ground, and a knife was stuck on his back. When his face cover was opened, it turned out that it was not Maharaja but Louis. As detectives, when the others panicked with fear, Nick took the initiative to immediately run outside the place to look for the real Maharaja. When he arrived at the beach, he saw Maharaja being held hostage by the kidnapper on boat. He tried to catch them but the kidnapper shot him and rushed to escape. Meanwhile, Audrey took some photos of suspicious things such as a burnt shawl that had blood stains on it. Shortly after, Nick returned and gathered everyone. He had analyzed the situation and concluded that if someone tried to kidnap someone as rich as Maharaja, that person wouldn't work alone. Since one of them had escaped from the island with Maharaja, the other person might still be around them. It could be one of the guests, or maybe one of the closest to him. It could be Syra, Francisco, Seko, Imani, or even Claudette. They began accusing each other since they never believed in one another but Nick calmed them down and told everyone not to leave the island until the culprit was found. After that, Nick and Audrey went back to their villa. They blocked the front door with a table and a big vase to make sure the culprit couldn't enter, but just before they went to sleep, someone knocked on the door. They were afraid at first but turned out, it was Francisco. He explained that the culprit must be Claudette. He explained that Claudette was once a poor girl and she married Maharaja for the sake of his wealth, but unfortunately, before she married Maharaja, she was forced to sign an agreement that mentioned that she has no right to demand anything belong to Maharaja if they ended up divorced. Claude accused her of being the culprit after concluding that she was desperate to kidnap her own husband to claim all his money by ransom. Amid the explanation, someone knocked on the door again. They panicked and told Francisco to hide in the closet while they opened the door. Turned out it was Claudette. She frantically begged them to find her husband as soon as possible. Seeing her being so anxious, Audrey hugged her, but Audrey accidentally held a gun behind Claudette's back and immediately thought that what Francisco told them was right, 
but suddenly, Claudette claimed that the culprit must be either Syrah or Francisco. Claudette told them that Maharaja spoiled Syrah so much and because she was afraid to lose all the attention from her brother, she might end up kidnapping her own brother. Meanwhile, she also explained that Francisco might also be the culprit because Maharaja had found out about Francisco's dark secret that he tried to cover up and that he was afraid that the secret might end up being spoiled to everyone. Nick and Audrey were confused about whether to believe Claudette or Francisco. Shortly thereafter, another knock was heard on the door. They immediately told Claudette to hide behind a big flower vase. When they opened the door, it was Syrah. She immediately accused Claudette of the kidnapping. Audrey and Nick were confused and decided to get some food from the table while listening to Syrah, but before she could explain anything, once again, someone knocked on the door. They then told Syrah to hide in another room. When the door was opened, Seko and Imani were there. They then told Nick and Audrey that they were sure Francisco was the culprit. Turned out, Francisco just faced 85 charges for sleeping with hundreds of women and he needed money to pay all the charges. Francisco couldn't accept what he just heard and came out of the closet to deny all that. He then accused Seko and Imani of the kidnapping. He said that Seko was Maharaja's ex and she couldn't accept Maharaja marrying Claudette. After hearing that, Claudette and Syrah came out of their hideout and an intense argument happened between them. Hearing the ruckus from the room, Colonel and his troops entered to check on the situation. When the situation calmed down, Claudette's cell phone suddenly rang. She just received a voicemail from an unknown person, and when they played it, it was from the kidnapper. It was a threat to kill Maharaja if any of them dared to call the authorities. The kidnapper also asked for a ransom and would explain the detail the next morning. After hearing the voicemail, Nick found his wife asleep and suddenly, he felt dizzy and fainted. The next morning, Audrey woke up in a panic and immediately woke up Nick. She told him that apparently, the food that night was mixed with drugs. They then went to the beach after the colonel called everyone to gather there. They were confused to be called to the beach when suddenly, Miller, a top-class detective, and some of his men came out of the sea. Apparently, after receiving the news about Maharaja's kidnapping last night, Miller decided to provide help to find the culprit. Colonel was sure that someone like Miller is the right man to deal with the case. That morning, at 7 a.m. exactly, they all gathered to hear the call from the kidnapper. They were told to prepare $70 million in ransom and hand over the money in the night in Paris, France. That night, after preparing the ransom and arriving in Paris, Miller gave Audrey a gun and Claudette's cell phone because it was the only means of communication that the kidnapper would contact. When everything was ready, Miller then ordered them to get out of the car and walk so as not to be suspected. At the meeting point, the kidnapper showed up with a van and ordered them to get in. In the middle of the trip, one of the kidnappers changed the initial agreement. He ordered to hand over the suitcase containing the ransom money right away but Nick refused. He instead handcuffed the suitcase to his hand while asking them to bring him to Maharaja if they wanted the money, just like the initial agreement, but one of the asked the other man to cut off Nick's hand to get the suitcase. Hearing that, Nick's fight or flight instinct came into action. He attacked the kidnappers. All the kidnappers were dead and they didn't know where Maharaja was held captive. Suddenly, Miller showed up and asked them to hand over the suitcase. Nick, without any suspicion, immediately handed over the suitcase, but after Miller left, Audrey started to get suspicious. She suspected that all of this was Miller's plan to get all the money, but when they both looked out of the window, Miller's car exploded and their accusation was wrong. Suddenly, a mysterious guy appeared and took away the suitcases. Nick and Audrey were sure that the man must be the culprit, but suddenly, a truck appeared and hit the person. A masked person came out of the truck, took away the suitcase, and immediately left. So as not to lose track, Audrey memorized the truck's license plate number. When they were about to leave, Nick and Audrey saw the news which reported that they were both fugitives after being suspected of being the masterminds behind the kidnapping of Maharaja. They were shocked to see that, but suddenly, Nick remembered the French inspector who had helped their case four years ago. They rushed to meet the inspector. When they met, Nick told the whole incident of Maharaja's kidnapping and asked for the inspector's help so that he would help to track down the location of the truck that they saw before. After hearing the explanation, the inspector agreed to help them, but he asked them to tie his hands so that it would appear as if he was deliberately forced to help them. The inspector didn't want to ruin his reputation just because he was accused of helping a fugitive. After being tracked, the inspector finally managed to find the location of his truck. Nick and Audrey immediately went there. As soon as they arrived at the location, they were surprised to find themselves in front of a mansion. Suddenly, Seko and Imani showed up and threatened them with a gun. 
They were then taken to the mansion where Seko explained that they were not the culprit. They only took the suitcase because they needed the money. Out of nowhere, Seko suddenly shot Imani and said that she was not needed anymore. To erase all traces, she decided to burn down the whole place, but suddenly, Imani, who was dying after getting shot, shot Seko and killed her immediately. The fire got bigger after that, but thankfully, Audrey and Nick managed to escape. On the street, Audrey called the inspector who was currently interrogating Syrah, Francisco, Claudette, and Colonel. Audrey there ordered everyone to gather at the Eiffel Tower restaurant because they had concluded the case and that one of them was the mastermind of the kidnapping. After everyone gathered at the restaurant, just like four years ago, Nick and Audrey started to sequence the events one by one. In the middle of the analysis, suddenly Maharaja came out of the elevator. They were both confused and happy to see Maharaja, but the smile suddenly disappeared the moment Maharaja showed that there was a bomb stick in his body. Maharaja told that the bomb would explode if Nick didn't throw the ransom money into the elevator, but instead of doing the order, Nick didn't seem to care. He calmly explained the small clues he found during the investigation. Nick even guaranteed that the kidnapper wouldn't dare to detonate the bomb. He knew that the kidnapper was there with them. When the countdown was about to end, Nick revealed to everyone that the kidnapper was Miller, and as Nick said, Miller did not dare to detonate the bomb because he was there. He then showed up and threatened to kill them all if Nick refused to hand over the suitcase. Nick tried to buy some time by asking how he survived the car explosion. Miller then told them that he deliberately blew up his car to avoid suspicion, but before the car exploded, he went into the explosion-proof trunk that he had prepared before. Amid the panic, someone visited the restaurant and tried to order some food. When Miller's attention was diverted, Nick rushed to grab the trigger, unfortunately, Nick's effort failed and the inspector was accidentally shot. When Miller was about to run away using a rope, Audrey immediately jumped and grabbed Miller's body without any hesitation. Seeing his wife in danger, Nick rushed to catch up on the top floor. Nick tried to shoot Miller but he missed. He then tried to buy time again by challenging Miller to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Meanwhile, after tying a rope to her body, Audrey tried to escape downstairs with the suitcase but Miller knocked her down and she was hanged on the rope. Nick suddenly attacked Miller. Luckily, Audrey managed to save herself. Meanwhile, Miller who was annoyed ordered his men in the helicopter to shoot everyone in the restaurant. He then continued to fight Nick. Shortly after, Audrey came again and tried to shoot Miller, but she instead hit Nick. When she saw a rope roller near Miller, she got an idea. She shot the rope while Nick tied the other end of the rope to Miller's back. Miller was pulled by the rope and plunged right into his helicopter's propeller. The helicopter crashed into the tower and into the river, killing all the passengers. Shortly after, the ambulance and the police came to secure the location. When everyone gathered, Audrey saw that Syrah's hand looked like it was badly injured, Syrah convinced her that it was just faded henna ink that she used at her brother's wedding. Hearing that, Audrey felt something was not right. When she worked in the salon, she once used henna ink and knew 100% that if henna ink has been applied on the skin for days, the ink will dry and wouldn't fade. Audrey also remembered at the wedding, after Maharaja was kidnapped, he took a photo of a burnt shawl that was covered in blood, and she saw the stain on Cyrus' hand had the same color as the blood on the shawl. Audrey was sure that Syrah was one of the culprits that kidnapped Maharaja, and after constantly being cornered, Syrah finally admitted that she was the mastermind behind the kidnapping of Maharaja. She was also the one that hired Miller and his men to kidnap Maharaja with the ransom money as their payment. She wanted to get rid of her own brother to get all the inheritance for herself. When everyone was off guard, Saira immediately snatched the police gun and tried to shoot Maharaja, but luckily, the colonel jumped and blocked the bullet with his arm. Claudette then hit Saira on the head and made her faint. Everything was finally over. Nick and Audrey once again managed to solve a big case. The next morning, before returning to America, Audrey and Nick walk around enjoying the beautiful views of the city of Paris when suddenly, Maharaja's envoy came to give them a mobile phone. From the phone, Maharaja said that he had a small gift as a thank you gift for Nick and Audrey for saving his life. It turned out that the small gift that Maharaja gave was a bag full of money worth $10 million in cash. While laughing, Maharaja also said that if the money ran out later, they could sell the bag for $3 million because the bag is made out of rare animal skin. After the call ended, they continued to enjoy the beauty of Paris while hoping that in the future, they will not face any more cases.